Hi friends, it's Karen from the Friends of Turkey Creek Nature Preserve. How y'all doing today? Well, I got with my friend Kate and we made a little video that we wanted to share with everyone because we're doing some, a new event at Turkey Creek that people haven't heard about much and we just needed to, wanted to explain to y'all a little bit more about what it was. Um, have you ever been forest bathing? Hmm, what could that be you say? You probably are already doing it, I hope. Watch the video and check it out. I, I think it's very interesting and if nothing else, it's a calming time at the creek. Y'all enjoy. Hey friends. It's beautiful out here today at Turkey Creek. I'm here with my friend Kate. Hey there. <laughs> we both volunteer at the um, Turkey Creek uh, Native Plant nursery and we come out to turkey creek all the time because we love to be outside um and kate has gotten certified in forest bathing and you say what is forest bathing? Weird word. <laughs> we can't really come up with a better explanation of what forest bathing is it's really a japanese method that's been translated into english and it doesn't translate very well does it no and that's the problem and it's not like anything else. It's not like anything else you would do in the woods. And so it's easier to say what it's not. It's not a hike. It's not a nature walk. It's not a meditation. It's not this, it's not that. Um, but it is um, a way to be in the woods. The closest thing I can think of, one thing I did use to describe it recently, it was like having a picnic, <laughs> except yeah. without the food. <laughs> I like that idea. <laughs> you know? Uh, Especially without the food, for me anyway. Food. But it's just kind of like hanging out here, you know. Um, it's it's something everybody knows how to do. You knew how to do it when you were a kid. It's doing something that has no goal or or no um, purpose. Mm -hmm. It's play. So it's like playing. It's play yeah. instead of um, doing some, you know, let's hike to the top of that hill or. Uh, let's see how many plants we can identify, mm -hmm. you know. Um, to see how far we can go today. Right, right. It was developed in Japan in the 1980s as an antidote to urban life uh, because um, the government there realized that people were who had been moving from the country to the city and started the jockey desk and work in the tech boom we're developing a lot of stress-related diseases. And um, they thought maybe this would help. There's some, there's a, actually quite a bit of uh, medical research in Japan done on just being in nature and, and helping. Um, it kind of stands down your nervous system. Mm. It, you know, we, we, we evolved in. in well, we all know that's true world. just from, um, Excuse me. No, go ahead. Just from, um, like, if I'm at home and I'm sitting in the house watching TV, I can go outside and sit on my patio and I instantly become free. And my mind starts to just wander yes. and be a lot more calm yes, than yes. it was inside the house. Yes. So is that sort of what you're talking about? Uh, yes, exactly. It's a, it, it, Things grab your mind. You, um, well, we ha it's our human physiology we have that fight flight freeze kind of physiology that limbic system that that just gets on alert and if you're chronically stressed then you are constantly on alert and your and your nervous system is jangled all the time um, and doing getting out in nature and uh, just bathing <laughs> in in the breathing the wild air, as Emerson said, is just is just what your nervous system is primed. Yeah, I agree. I know that. I think that's one of the reasons why we come up to the um, native plants. Oh yeah. On Friday mornings in work, mm -hmm. you're getting your hands in the dirt. You're playing with God's beautiful plants, mm -hmm. and it's just. A different little world. Yes. You yeah. totally escape from everything else. 
And sometimes I need that. I just need to be stress-free. Uh, I'm retired, so that doesn't mean I don't have stress anymore, though. No, no. Some things about retirement are very stressful. So. And I've been sick for a couple of years now. Yeah. I'm still to the point where I'm using a walker to walk around at different places if I'm going to be out for a while. And I'm trying to build my strength back up. And I thought one of the ways to do that would be to come up here and try the forest bathing. And that would be a gentle way to be outside and to bring that stress relief. Um, and I think I'm doing the right thing today. So, yeah, yeah. So and that's how I got into it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I have a vision impairment and I used to love to do stuff like this. And for several years I thought, well, I'm never going to be able to do that again. It was very, very disheartening. And, yeah. um, yeah, I wanted to get back out here. And this is a way, I've known about this for a while now. It's been in the United States for about 10 years. It, like I said, it started in Japan in the 80s. Um, this is an international organization. Mm -hmm. the, um, uh, people in my class were, there, was, there were a couple people from Portugal. One of my teachers was from Portugal. Okay. A lot of people from Canada. So it's um, it's a new thing. I think you'll be hearing about it's it. It's recognized a lot more. then as being yeah. a useful tool. Yeah. I yeah. like that. And maybe maybe somebody will come up with a better word than horse bathing to describe what it is. <laughs> well, it is hard to figure out, isn't it? Yeah, because, it really is. I mean, if yeah. you say stress reliever, sometimes people don't even want to hear mm -hmm. that. Yeah. And the group is called the Association of Nature and Forest Therapy. And that word therapy is a little bit, mm -hmm. it has a little bit of a problem too, yes. because we're not therapists, you know? We're just- um, Teaching people how to play again. We're teaching people how to play again. <laughs> I love it. Reminding people, <laughs> helping you remember how to play. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, yeah. I've, today, um, like I say, I, I'm down here with my walker. As you can see, the ground here is fairly level. I had one little step to get down, but my walker is very light, so I could pick it up and just walk through it. And we're going to walk up here to the glade behind us. Yeah, we picked the glade for today nice because of the sun. We try to sunny. Yeah, we yeah. try to go with the flow of what's 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 telling us to do today. And and it's a little chilly, and that sun mm -hmm. looks inviting. So we're going to walk over there, and we'll pick back up in a little bit. When you get ready, uh, if you could close your eyes, uh, I like to close my eyes and pay attention to my other senses. And, um, but everything's an invitation. You do you. Do um, what feels right for you. Okay. So um, just uh, we're going to settle in. And we're going to start paying attention a little bit for a little while. Turning our attention to different things. Just calmly relaxing and closing our eyes. Listening to all the sounds and activities around us. Right? Yeah, some people may not feel like relaxing. It is that invitational. Okay. Just sit okay. here. You know, maybe someday you're just you're just not in the mood to relax. You're kind of keyed up. So the whole point is not to worry about whatever it is happening to you. Whatever is going on with you is not wrong. You know, it's just it's just okay. So. Um, but we'll just sit here with our eyes closed for a while if, if you feel like closing your eyes. Okay. And start tuning into some of our other senses. Like right now, I'm feeling this rock underneath my bottom. It's cold. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of feels good, you know, but it, but it is a cold day. And I'm feeling that cold and that chill and that rock. The hardness and the gravity of the earth holding me down. One thing about gravity, you don't have to hold on to anything. You just let the earth hold on to you. Hmm. Cool. Let me see if you can feel it. And of course, you can always hear the creek. I wonder, can you hear it everywhere here? Everywhere I've ever been around this road area, you can hear it. You can even hear it. Now, when you're hiking up on the tall high hikes up behind me on the yeah, trails, the narrow ridge, narrow ridge. you can't hear it until you get closer coming down off the hill and then you can start hearing it. It's so much fun when you can hear it. It's, oh, I hear it, I hear it, we're almost there. 
feels like it's cooler here. The air is cool um, here next to the creek. And of course, this whole area was cut by the creek and created by it, really. This rough oh, yeah. Um, no doubt. So I always think about where did the creek, where does the creek actually end? You know, it doesn't really end with the water. No. It maybe ends back there somewhere. Um, but all of this is is Turkey Creek. We're sitting in part of Turkey Creek. We're bathing. <laughs> We're bathing use, at the falls. Yes. And High energy. above the water. Yes. There's so many ways to enjoy nature and being at the creek. Kate's giving us some golden rod. Solidago. It's a good medicinal plant. Well, let's just gonna try. We're gonna see what it tastes like. Just for the, just because we're being kids today. <laughs> no, we're just getting a little sprig of a goldenrod. It won't hurt anything. The no, birds have plenty. Yeah. And uh so you never taste anything that you're not sure about. Right. But we know that goldenrod can be made into tea. And it's not, lots of people think that it has, uh, that it causes, it causes problems with their allergies, but actually that's uh, ragweed that, that blooms, that kind of hides underneath the goldenrod. Right. I've been, I've been weeding ragweed out all summer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's an interesting taste. Does it taste like the tea? I haven't tasted the tea yet. Mm hmm. Tea yeah. has a real bright taste to it. Mm hmm. Little lemony. Yeah, lemony is a good word. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Not bad at all. Mm. And this is, um,. This is a plant that not only is it good for um, a tea, which helps you sleep at night. It's supposed to be a tea that helps with your digestive system. And also anti-inflammatory. Anti-inflammatory. It helps with allergies. That's and, what I was mm -hmm, going to start to say, that uh -huh. the yeah. ragweed actually, people think the, the goldenrod is causing problems with their allergies, but it actually was used as a remedy um, by native people for respiratory kind of things. It's an anti-inflammatory. And also I have uh, recently learned that you can take the little yellow tips that we were just eating and put them in olive oil and infuse them for a month and a half, 46 weeks. And that turns into a uh, medicinal rub when you strain it mm. that you can use for arthritis. I can't wait for ours to be ready to really find out if that's true or not. Yeah. We shall see. We learn more all the time about our plants here at the creek. We are in the ecoscape and wanted to go down by the falls. Because I have a walker, of course I can't use the stairs. And if you're kind of unsteady on your feet, you wouldn't want to use the stairs. But this is a little natural path here that allows you to go down to the falls if you're just going to walk without stairs. Maybe you have a baby stroller. I wouldn't suggest a wheelchair, but I'm doing okay with my walker. Actually. Got a little gravel on the trail, so I believe it's doable for a lot of folks that might have be in the situation that I'm in, so that they can come down to the falls.
she is. Oh, gorgeous girl. Sliding under yeah, the and it's like we were talking about. You don't have to, you don't have to uh, tell children what what to do with a with a rock. They know, <laughs> or you don't have to give them a suggestion or an invitation, which is what we what we call it in forest bathing. We just call them invitations, not directions or instructions. And so we were thinking that maybe we'd come up with an invitation for here, and we're sitting right next to the creek. And I think it's a beautiful fall day. If it were summer, I would suggest that we maybe take our shoes and socks off and put our feet in the water. But maybe I think today we could watch the leaves floating down the creek and maybe ask them where they're going. We we'll sit here for about 20 minutes and I'll keep track of the time. So, you know, you can just not worry about the time. And, uh, you know, there's just no reason for it. Just just sit and watch the leaves floating in the water and uh, watch, them, watch them go by, watch the creek go by. Come here and see some season. You know how much quieter it is today in the fall than it is in the summer. Not only with people, there are a lot of people who like to swim here, it's a good place to swim. But the, the water itself is, is slower and gentler, like it's settling down for the winter. It is, isn't it? So I'll just set the time, and we'll just sit here for a while, and uh, watch the leaves go by.
We're doing elderberry tea here at the end of our forest bath. And what are we gonna, we're gonna let the, the forest have one cup? We're gonna let the forest have one cup, just to, just to be remindful that, um, you know, we're lucky to have this here. And giving a little back, because this is elderberry, and elder, elder grows in these woods. And um, so this is giving just a little bit back. Okay. Um, so yeah, so this is elderberry tea with local honey in it, sweetening it, and um, it's got a little bit of gardenia from mm -hmm. my garden infused in it. So gardenia is not native, but it's a little bit of summer in here too. Oh. And the elderberry is ripening about now. So yeah, so I think this tree actually looks <laughs> like it could be so. Um, we're just gonna be grateful for this forest, for this beautiful day when I see it, for this beautiful day, and this beautiful, and this beautiful earth, and yeah, there we go, elderberry tea. Thank you. Yeah. We have a little bit of a, a little bit oh, of a snack. snack too. Thank you. Yeah. What a nice way to end the little adventure here in the forest. Mm. Cheers, everyone. Oh, I just spilled on all my tea. <laughs> Fumble fingers. Yeah, mm, that's good. good. It's very sweet, isn't it? It's, it's, tastes perfect. Yeah, it's good. We have another cup. Well, we had our tea, our walk is finished, we're getting, to, getting ready to leave, and before we get out of here, Kate's going to do a poem from Clark, Miss Clark, Mary Clark. Well, I thought we would read The Piece of Wild Things by Wendell Berry. Wendell Berry. Yeah, it's a nice, it's a nice one, and Wendell Berry is oh, wonderful. So, would you... I'm gonna read a poem online, huh? Okay. The Peace of Wild Things? The Peace of Wild Things. Okay. When despair for the world grows in me, and I wake in the night at the least sound, in fear of what my life and my children's lives might be, I go down, I go and lie down, where the wood drake rests in his beauty on the water, and the great heron feeds. I come into the peace of wild things, who do not tax their lives with forethought of grief. I come into the presence of still water, and I feel above me the day-blind stars waiting with their light. For a time I rest in the grace of the world, and I am free. Yes, we are free here in this beautiful natural spot well what y'all think about that i thought it was pretty fun anyway november 13th is sunday at one o'clock will be the next forest bathing event at the preserve so we'd love for y'all to come join us um there's a link below or link attached with this video on how you can sign up and join us oh by the way if you're wondering those are swamp sunflowers behind me aren't they gorgeous a beautiful fall flower. We do sell these at our Turkey Creek Native Plant Nursery. So, hint, hint. We're there on Friday mornings, and if y'all would like to pick one up, you can come by and get you one anytime you want to. Friday mornings. Y'all take care now. <laughs>